Well, Brad certainly didn't get larger clothes for Christmas. <laughs> Good grief, man. Is that the last shirt they had? <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> does, does he shop at Baby Gap? <laughs> Brad, I'm just jealous. It's really all it is. It's just, just a hard heart. I've got a hard heart. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my name's Darren. Uh, last time I was up here, uh, those of you that were here that week, I uh, had the fascinating task of talking about the realities of hell. It was so much fun to do. <laughs> um, so this time around, um, I mean, Matt's not here anymore, and they said you could preach on whatever you want to preach on. So today, my title is... Um, all pets go to heaven. <laughs> Just lighten things up a little bit. I don't know if that's doctrinally correct. <laughs> I will say this, though. Um, if you remember back to the Noah and the ark and the flood story, uh, all I'm saying is God saved a whole lot more animals than he did people. So <laughs> you may want to dig into that. Brad brought up uh, resolutions. Anybody make a resolution? Anybody got any resolutions yet? Anybody? A couple of you? Not many of you. Most of you look disgusted as soon as I say that. <laughs> Instead of you made your resolution, it's just a lot of... Why? <laughs> they don't work, by the way. Sorry for those of you that raised your hand. <laughs> Bless your hearts. I'm... But they don't work. Um, a study I read this week said 9% of New Year's resolutions actually get followed through with for the entire year. Nine. If you do the math, that means 81%. 91, 101. Pretty much everybody. <laughs> really stinks it up. In fact, what the research shows is it usually only takes two weeks for the vast majority, for 90% of us, to drop our resolutions. Two weeks. It's so bad that there's a new holiday. You can Google this. This is a true thing. It's called Quitter's Day. <laughs> it's a thing. This guy decided that on the second Friday of the year, is when most people have given up on the resolutions. Therefore, he thought, I'll, I'll start this thing called Quitter's Day, and it'll be a Friday that we can, all of us who have already messed up, we can start over. Seriously. If you don't do it on a day like New Year's, you're not doing it on Quitter's Day. You're just not. And the bigger problem, I think, with resolutions is that they're, they're based out of disappointment and some shame, right? Think about the, I mean, the number one resolution is what? Lose weight, get healthier, stop smoking, right? Those are the things that we're trying to do better at, which means we look back on the last 365 days and just go, Phew. Not good. I got to make some changes. I got to do some stuff different this year. And then you go, tomorrow, when it starts. And then you're going to wake up tomorrow, and you're going to go, well, I mean, it is New Year's Day. It's a holiday, and there's food you're supposed to eat on New Year's Day. I mean, it's a rule, so I'll start on the second. And you don't. You'll also see this thing all over social media today and tomorrow. New year, yeah. new you, new me. That's of the devil. <laughs> nope. It's new year, same me. Just a different day. It's just, just it's a Monday. <laughs> 
So it's not this idea. The idea, like, to set goals and to want to be better and to want to change, uh, all that stuff is great. Like, we talk about life change in here every single week. But I think this whole resolution nonsense, new year, new me nonsense, it, it just sets us up for failure. Because we have these vague goals that have no action steps, and the second, the second that we don't reach one of those, we go right back into the shame cycle. And our brain tells us, see, told you so. So... I'm, I'm proposing something different this year. It's going to be a little experiment we're going to undergo for the next 365 days. We'll see how we, see how we do. Instead of looking at a, a new year, I wonder what it would look like if we woke up every day and said, new day, new me. Because then all we got to do is get through 24 hours. Most of us spend part of that asleep and in the bathroom. <laughs> so it trims it on down. New day, new me. What would that look like? And if we look at the life of Jesus, that's how he operated. Very deliberately, very slowly. If you joined us for the, um, or at the movies, you saw every, every week you would see Jesus with his followers and they would just be meandering, just moseying along throughout their day. And then anyone Jesus came into contact with that was, had questions or uh, was needing him for something, he would stop, and his disciples were usually the one going, come on, man, we got to go. We got stuff to do. We don't have food for today. We don't have anything for tomorrow. We don't even know where we're going to sleep tonight. Let's get moving. And he always stopped because that's how he lived. He just lived moment by moment, one day at a time. When people ask him how, how they should pray, you remember he says, um, well, you pray something like this. Our Father is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That's how he operated. Just a little further down in Matthew 6. He's talking to the people about, about their possessions and about money. And he says, all you guys ever do is worry about this kind of stuff. You worry about it all the time. He says, look at the birds. Look at the flowers. Doesn't the Father take care of them? How much more so will he take care of his children? And he says, stop worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough worries. It's coming. S stay with today. You're going to have stuff to deal with today that needs your attention, that needs your focus. I need your heart. So what would it look like instead of new year, new me, it began to be new day, new me? Um, if you got a Bible or if you got your little device, uh, look up the book of Lamentations. That's a tough one to find. It's in the L's. Wouldn't it be, I mean, an alphabetized Bible would be super convenient. Am I right? Let's, let's make that happen. Lamentations, chapter 3. If you don't know what this book is, this is a book written by the prophet Jeremiah. And it's when Jeremiah found out about Jerusalem being destroyed, which would have been his hometown, basically God's hometown, Jerusalem. It was just in ruins, and he was heartbroken about it. So he sat down, and he penned this sort of poetry. It was just his feelings. It was what, what he was experiencing in the midst of the downfall of Jerusalem. It's called Lamentations because it's a, a lament, right? This is not a happy read, 
This is a very sorrowful book. A lot of tears were cried writing this. So you're going, Darren, man, this has been a real big bummer so far. I mean, you're talking about our resolutions don't work. You're telling us I can't post new year, new me on Facebook later. I already had it ready to go. And now we're reading out of the book of Lamentations. Happy New Year. Well, it's about to take a turn. Okay? It's about to take a turn. So stick with me. Lamentations 3, and I'm going to start verse 19. It says, the Lord thought of my suffering and homelessness. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Here comes the turn. Watch this, 21. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. And I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. There's a lot of stuff right there, y'all. I don't know how many of us are leaving 23, heading into 24 with a lot of weight Stress, anxiety, disappointment in how the last year has gone, confusion about things that have happened these last 365 days. And so we come into a service like this where everybody's happy new year and we just kind of have to grin and bear it, just get through it and act like we're excited about tomorrow. But we also know tomorrow is just a Monday. Not a lot of hope there. So what I, I hope happens over the next few minutes is that, that you can see that you, you, you can move forward. You can one day at a time move forward. Because what Jeremiah says is, I have hope because the faithful love of the Lord never ends. God's love never ends. It does not depend upon our circumstances or our feelings. His faithful love never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh and anew each morning. It doesn't say on January the 1st, make it last. Figure it out, which is what we do with our resolutions. He says, every single morning when our eyes pop open, he's right there loving us and being faithful to us and offering his mercy. And that, therefore, should lead to hope. Jeremiah says, I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. I think that's a critical word because so many of us are worried about our inheritance and what we're going to have what we're going to need and he's looking at all of this ruin and he goes this is not my inheritance the Lord is my inheritance therefore I will hope in him so if we have shifted from thinking about a a New Year's resolution to a new day, then what do we do with that new day? If we got these unending mercies and it's unending love, then what do we do with the day? I still want to have some goals and make some progress and change some things. This is part of the experiment then. Instead of going, this year I'm going to lose weight. What we're going to do is we're going to say, 
I'm going to focus on one thing this year. And I'm going to work on it every day. I'm going to tell you my one thing. And then you're going to start thinking about your one thing. My one thing this year is, is health. Now, I know you're looking at me going, Darren, you look like the epitome of health. You're no Brad, Darren, but you're doing all right. <laughs> you sit so close, man. Just, I got to work through that. Um, it's health. My physical health, I used to be in amazing shape. Been to the gym five, six days a week. Part of it, that's part of it, my physical health. Part of it's my mental health. That's a tricky one you've ever spent more than eight minutes around me my emotional health and my relational health these are things I'm going to work on this year one day at a time I'm working on health every day and here's what's great about going one day at a time if you mess up a day you've not messed up the whole thing you've just messed up a day and we get to remember that there's new mercy awaiting us in the morning. We're going to get up. We're going to attack that day. So I want you to start thinking about your, your one word for one day. What's it going to be this year? Now, I just did something that is terrifying. I just told two roomfuls of people. Rooms full. Two rooms full of people what my word is going to be for the day this year. That's an enormous amount of accountability that y'all all get to watch play out now. <laughs> so if by August I've gained 42 pounds and you see me going down the road smoking a cigarette, <laughs> you'll know things haven't gone well. <laughs> but I can tell you I'm the kind of person that needs that accountability. Because when I get bored or when I get down or I suffer a setback, I, I disappear from the world. I check out, man, and I stop doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. So it was like the Lord told me, well, aren't you tired of that? And I go, yep. He goes, well, then let's do something about that this year. Just stand up and tell half of Houston. <laughs> so I want you to start thinking about your word, and I want you to start thinking about who you're going to tell. Because, boy, there's been a bunch of us. I'm real bad about this. I can make some goals and some action steps. I can write them down in my little yellow notebook. And if nobody knows them, nobody knows them. And if I didn't do it, I just didn't do it. I'm going to give you some words, okay? Pick your own. You don't have to use my list. I just thought I'd give you some things to be thinking about that I jotted down. Um, hope. That's what this whole passage about in Jeremiah. Hope. Maybe this is a year that you need to get some hope back. I've had a couple of those years. Peace. Maybe things have been really hectic. Things have just been off. Just very unstable and you've had no peace and maybe this year for one day at a time, that's your one thing. Restoration. Or reconciliation. Maybe there's relationships that are just super unhealthy and are taking you the wrong direction. Maybe your words re-engage. See what I did there, Brad? Plugged your little thing. I'm guessing that probably a lot of us in here could use this one that you and your spouse could re-engage? Because I don't know if you're married or not, 
but it's sometimes not a whole lot of fun. Most of you know I, I, I do stand-up comedy, and, and one of my opening lines is, uh, makes my wife very uncomfortable, but it gets people laughing, so I keep saying it. And I say, hey, my name's Darren Neely. I've been somewhat happily married for 24 years. Did you feel the chuckle of the married people? It wasn't outright laughter, but it was... <laughs> Because that's the truth. You've not been happily married for 24 years. You're a liar. You might be happily married for about nine days. So maybe that's what needs to, maybe this is the year that you and your spouse re-engage. Maybe your one thing, one day at a time, is forgiveness. Maybe there's some broken relationship somewhere that you know the step, but you've not taken that step and it's holding you back. Then I, the last one I put here is maybe your word is, is going to be gratefulness. If you've heard the phrase from people around you, you sure are critical about stuff. It's a pretty good sign maybe that's yours. That's definitely could, could have been mine. It could have been easily mine because, y'all, I can find something wrong with a lot of stuff. Santa Claus is too fat. He's too skinny. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> maybe it is gratefulness. But we can look back the end of 2024 and we could watch what God has done. And we can see real life change happening. One thing, one day. What they found out about these 9% is that only 6% of people, only 6% of people that started a resolution, only 6% of them at the end of the year felt any significant life change had happened. Yet what we know is that God is in the life-changing business. We've experienced it. We sing about it. We see stories about it. We talk about it in our groups. And so I want to invite you to be a part of this with me this next year. There's a thing in the Bible called the year of Jubilee. Jewish people used to, used to partake in. It was a year to celebrate all that God had done. And I just think, man, wouldn't it be cool if in 2025, the Met just had a year of Jubilee and celebration because the love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. The Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. I'm going to ask the band to come up. And we're going to leave today by rejoicing and hoping in him. Okay, We're not going to leave by me going, good night, everybody. But the whole week as I was putting this together, we were in Arkansas for the holidays. I just had this song in my head over and over and over. And I'm not asking you guys to do this, by the way. This is, I'm just going to read it, okay? But it's a song I grew up in my house hearing often because my mom had the eight track. <laughs> it was written in 74, which is the year of my birth, by this sweet little lady. But then in 81, but if you Google this later, if you Spotify this later, this is the one you're going to want to look up. In 81, uh, a, a, an amazing theologian, uh, Merle Haggard, redid the song. <laughs> so you're going to want to definitely listen to that one. Here's what it says. It's a song called One Day at a Time. And many of you know it. Here's, here's the lyrics. I'm only human. 
just a man. Help me to believe in what I can be and all that I am. Show me the stairway that I have to climb. Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. The chorus goes one day at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking of you. Give me the strength to do every day what I have to do. Watch this. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. So for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time. That's what I'm challenging myself to do this year. And I'd love to have you, um, I'd love to have you join me. Let me pray. God, we thank you for this day, for this time together. And God, I pray that we can, that this be a year of incredible life change. And that the end of it, that the, the whole city just has been pointed toward you because of it. God, we love you. We thank you for loving us first. And we pray these things in Jesus' name.